Hi, my name is Greg Maxwell, and in this training, I'm going to share how in taxable damages cases, plaintiff attorneys can double or triple their client's after-tax net recovery. I have two goals for this training. First, I'll discuss a major tax problem that causes plaintiffs, your clients, to pay too much in taxes due to the 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. And second, I'll share with you an innovative tax planning strategy that greatly increases your client's net recovery by lowering the amount of taxes they pay. And the only way for your clients to avoid paying enormous tax bills and taxable damages cases is through the planning strategy I'll be discussing today. So look, as a fellow attorney, I know that you're busy and I know that your time is valuable. If you stay to the end of this presentation, I'm going to give you details on how your clients can get a free personalized tax savings analysis at no cost. And this tax savings analysis demonstrates how much more the client can net from their recovery by using the strategy I'll discuss today. And it provides you, the attorney, with significant CYA. If you are a plaintiff attorney and you help clients in any of the following case types, I invite you to focus on this training because this training can absolutely help your clients. Financial tax and legal malpractice, defamation, libel, slander, or privacy violations, interference with property or contracts, fraud, negligence, or breach of contract or bad faith claims, trespassing, encroachment, or property-related claims, wrongful arrest or imprisonment, intentional infliction of emotional distress, any lawsuit that may result in punitive damages or post-judgment interest, certain wrongful death claims against employers. For example, in Texas, if the employer is grossly negligent, the entire recovery is considered punitive damages. So bottom line, if you're a plaintiff lawyer who handles cases where the damages are taxable and attorney's fees are not deductible, more on this soon, your clients definitely need this. Before we dive in, some case types, like most employment, whistleblower, and personal injury cases, do not need all of the strategies I outline in this video. So we've prepared tailored trainings for attorneys who handle cases in these specific practice areas. If you're an employment law or whistleblower attorney, we have a separate training for you at amicusplanners.com forward slash employment. If you're a personal injury attorney, we have a training for you at amicusplanners.com forward slash PI. However, if you have cases where a verdict is possible and thus may result in punitive damages or post-judgment interest, keep watching because any legal recovery with punitive damages or post-judgment interest need the strategies I discuss in this video even in an employment whistleblower or personal injury case. You're probably wondering why I'm qualified to teach on this topic. So if you don't know me, my name is Greg Maxwell. I'm a practicing attorney and a certified financial planner. And my firm, Amicus Settlement Planners, works with attorneys and their clients all over the country. We focus almost exclusively on the financial and tax planning issues for plaintiffs and plaintiff attorneys. As I mentioned, this is very unique, and you probably haven't heard of this before. And the reason for that is the vast majority of financial advisors and CPAs haven't heard of it because most financial advisors and CPAs work with dentists, doctors, business owners, real estate agents, and that kind of thing. But very few specialize in working with plaintiffs. So this strategy is completely unique to plaintiffs in taxable damages cases. And because most financial advisors and CPAs are unaware of this strategy, your clients, therefore, are overpaying the taxes due on their legal recovery to the tunes of tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars. Here are the three parts that we'll be covering today. Part one, how to spot the plaintiff double tax trap that creates an enormous tax burden for your clients. In part two, we'll cover how your clients can avoid paying the plaintiff double tax. And in part three, we'll talk about how to get started with this strategy and how to protect yourself from having upset clients and potential liability. And I promise this is not one of those videos where they never get to the meat of the solution. We're going to give you the solution in full detail, but we have to outline the problem in part one before we can outline the solution in part two. Part one, how to spot the plaintiff double tax trap that creates an enormous tax burden for your clients. To understand the plaintiff double tax trap, we first must understand when the recoveries or settlements are taxable to the client. As a general rule, the only time a recovery is not taxable to a client is when the settlement is for a personal physical injury and there is no punitive damages or post-judgment interest. The types of cases that are taxable include the large list of cases that I outlined previously. 
Next, we need to discuss the deductibility of attorney's fees in taxable cases and how the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act made things much worse for plaintiffs. Plaintiffs have always been taxed on the full gross recovery in taxable damages cases, including on the attorney's fee portion of the recovery. And this is key to understanding the plaintiff double tax trap. Before the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017 was passed, plaintiffs could deduct the attorney's fees as a deduction on their tax return and avoid paying tax on the attorney fee portion. However, now because of the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, individual plaintiffs cannot claim a deduction for attorney's fees. This means plaintiffs pay taxes on 100% of the gross recovery, including 100% of the attorney's fees. The major exceptions are employment cases and whistleblower claims. In most of these types of cases, plaintiffs can deduct their attorney's fees. So for purposes of this presentation, when I refer to taxable damages or taxable cases, I'm referring to any case type where the plaintiff has to pay taxes on the recovery and where the plaintiff cannot deduct their attorney's fees. I'm specifically excluding employment and whistleblower cases. In taxable damages cases, plaintiffs pay taxes on the entire gross recovery. So let's take an example. There's a $10 gross settlement, $4 goes to attorney's fees, and $6 goes to the plaintiff. After the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, the plaintiff pays tax on the entire $10, even though the plaintiff only receives $6. In addition, the attorney also pays taxes on the $4 of attorney's fees. The attorney fee portion then is effectively taxed twice. The plaintiff pays taxes on the attorney's fees and the attorney pays taxes on their attorney's fees. The double taxation of attorney's fees is what we're calling the plaintiff double tax trap. So the plaintiff shows income of 10, but only actually receives six, but has to pay tax on the full 10. So what does this mean for the plaintiff? Let's look at an example to illustrate the impact of the plaintiff double tax. So let's assume there's a $10 million recovery, a 40% contingent legal fee, and a 40% tax rate that the client is going to have to pay on the gross settlement. So that means 40% of that 10 million is going to go to legal fees. That means another 40% is going to be paid by the client in taxes on the full $10 million gross recovery, which means there's only 20% left for the client as their net recovery. So in other words, the client after taxes nets only 20% of the gross settlement. So in this example, we looked at a 40% combined federal and state tax rate for the client. But what happens if the client's combined federal, state, and local tax is actually 50%, which it is in many states? So in this example, we have the same $10 million gross recovery, a 40% contingent legal fee, and a combined 50% tax rate that the client is going to pay. So 40% of the $10 million gross recovery goes to legal fees. 50% of the gross settlement is going to be taxed to the client, leaving only 10% available to the client as their net recovery. So in this example, the client after taxes nets only 10% of the gross settlement. Now let's look at one more example that shows the impact that case costs have on the net recovery to the client. So again, the same $10 million gross settlement, a 40% contingent legal fee plus 10% in costs and a 40% combined client tax rate. So now 50% of the gross recovery is eaten up in legal fees and costs. The client is paying 40% or 4 million of the gross settlement in taxes, which leaves only 10% of the gross settlement as the net recovery to the client. So the important point here is that the client pays the double tax on the combined amount of legal fees and costs. That's the amount that the client wants to deduct but cannot. Also, note that if the client's tax rate were 50% as it was in the last example, the client would net nothing from the settlement. So do these net recoveries of between 0 and 20% actually happen? Well, let's look at a real-life example from a case most of you have probably heard of or are familiar with. The real-life case example we'll look at is the Kobe Bryant lawsuit that was filed by his widow, Vanessa. Check out this headline from Forbes. Taxes on $31 million Kobe Bryant verdict make 
the IRS the big winner. And let's see why the IRS was the big winner here. So let's look at the numbers. Of the $31 million settlement, $16 million was allocated to Kobe Bryant's widow, Vanessa Bryant. So attorney's fees and costs were 40%. The client's tax rate, Vanessa's tax rate was 50.3%, 37% federal rate, and a 13.3% state and local tax rate, which means that of the $16 million gross settlement that was allocated to Vanessa Bryant, she netted 9.7% of that $16 million, or a little bit over $1.5 million as her take-home after-tax net recovery. So how is this going to make your client feel? They think they're getting a huge recovery and end up with less than one-tenth of the total settlement. They may even not want to settle the case due to the tax bill. We've spoken with plaintiff attorney whose clients will not settle because they're either so worried about the tax bill or they simply can't afford to pay taxes on the legal fee portion of the case. We've even seen cases where the client owes more money than they will net after taxes. It's crazy. So let's do a quick exercise together to help you figure out the potential size of the double tax issue in a case you may already have, or if you don't have a case, you can just estimate for now. Here's a quick way to estimate the amount of the plaintiff double tax trap. Your contingent fee plus case costs multiplied by your client's marginal tax rate equals the plaintiff double tax trap amount. So the plaintiff double tax is the amount the client should not have to pay, but will pay without the solution we're going to discuss in part two of this video. So you might be thinking, why haven't I heard about the plaintiff double tax? Well, most attorneys haven't, and the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act is very new. So most CPAs find out about the plaintiff double tax when one of their clients, your plaintiff, fills out their tax return and the CPA flags the issue. That is when this usually comes to light. Their huge tax bill can turn out to be a terrible surprise for your client. We work with plaintiff's accountants all the time. They're usually learning the basics of this and don't have a sophisticated understanding. The Supreme Court has ruled that plaintiffs are taxed on the attorney portion of a recovery. In the 2005 Commissioner v. Banks and Commissioner v. Benitez cases, most CPAs are unaware of this. The Supreme Court held that when a taxpayer's recovery constitutes income, as in taxable damages cases, the taxpayer's income includes the portion of the recovery paid to the attorney as the attorney's fee. Plaintiffs have always been taxed on the legal fees in these types of cases. However, before the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, the legal fees were deductible. Now, after the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, Plaintiffs cannot deduct legal fees, except in extremely limited situations. So until recently, there was just no good solution for plaintiffs to avoid the plaintiff double tax. So again, if you don't know about the plaintiff double tax, it's not your fault. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act only happened a few years ago, and most accountants don't even know about it. So some attorneys have tried to circumvent the plaintiff double tax trap. However, none of these alternatives work. So we're going to go through a few of those failed alternatives to discuss why they don't work. One failed alternative that attorneys have tried is to characterize the attorney-client relationship as a business partnership so that the client can deduct legal fees as a business expense. The U.S. Supreme Court rejected this characterization in banks, writing that instead the plaintiff-lawyer relationship is a quintessential principal-agent relationship. Another failed alternative that some attorneys have tried is to transfer a portion of the claim to the attorney himself or herself. So if effective, the plaintiff then would not receive that portion of the recovery and therefore have no need to deduct the legal fees. Unfortunately, this strategy was nullified by the Banks case in 2005. The court wrote that a plaintiff's income includes the portion of the recovery paid to the attorney as a contingent fee. A third failed approach that we hear often is what we call the two check approach. So some plaintiff attorneys will ask the defendant to send two checks, one check to the attorney for their fees and costs, and another check directly to the plaintiff for their portion. And this is by far the most common approach I hear mentioned when I speak with attorneys settling taxable damages cases. And look, I appreciate that attorneys are trying to be creative and solve this problem, However, as the Supreme Court clearly states in the Banks case, 
The plaintiff's income includes the portion paid to the attorney, regardless of how the checks are cut. So simply having the defendant cut two checks doesn't change the underlying taxation, and it doesn't solve the double tax trap problem. So what it means is that you and your clients are playing the audit lottery. We've seen situations where the client has been audited, and in the course of that audit, the IRS then audits the law firm to figure out what happened with these payments. So using the two-check approach or any of the failed alternatives on this list creates a potentially significant tax liability for the plaintiff. And it means that both you and your client are playing the IRS audit lottery. If your client is ever audited by the IRS, they're going to be subject to potential penalties and interest. And it could open up a can of worms for your firm as well. So before we had the solution we're going to discuss in part two... The only planning tool we had as settlement planners to reduce the client's tax bill was to spread out the receipt of their recovery over several tax years through the use of a structured settlement annuity. Instead of paying a 40% or more tax rate on their recovery in the year the case settles, the client's marginal tax rate is often much lower by spreading out the recovery over several tax years. Therefore, the marginal tax rate that the client pays each year is much less than it would have been if they paid all of the tax in the year the case settles. Therefore, the client ultimately will end up paying much less in total taxes on the recovery by using a structured settlement annuity. So let's go through a quick example to show why spreading out a client's taxable recovery with a structured settlement annuity is so valuable. So in scenario one, we're assuming no annuity. The client's just paying all of the taxes in the tax year that they receive the settlement. So let's assume for this example, a $5 million gross settlement. There's a 40% attorney fee and the client's at a 45% combined marginal tax rate. That means that the pre-tax amount to the client is $3 million. The client's total tax bill is $2.25 million meaning the after-tax net to the client on a $5 million gross settlement is $750,000. That represents 15% of the gross settlement that actually makes it to the client after taxes. In scenario two, using a structured settlement annuity, we have the same $5 million gross settlement, the same 40% attorney fee, but in this example, we're using a 10-year annuity. So in year one, the client is paying the same 45% tax rate, but in years two to 10, their marginal tax rate is only 25%. So the pre-tax amount to the client is still $3 million. It's just paid over 10 years through the structured settlement annuity. That means that the client's total tax bill is now 1.47 million instead of 2.25 million. So that means that the after-tax net to the client is $1.533 million instead of $750,000. And the after-tax percentage of the gross settlement to the client is 30.7% instead of 15% without using an annuity. So by using an annuity, we're able to increase the after-tax recovery of the client from $750,000 to $1.533 million a 104.4% increase to the client. So this illustration shows the power of using an annuity. However, there's still one big problem. Annuities don't avoid the plaintiff double tax trap. Annuities have been and continue to be an invaluable tax planning tool for clients. We use annuities and the strategy we'll discuss in part two to maximize tax savings for clients. However, An annuity alone does not avoid the plaintiff double tax trap. When combined with the tax strategy we'll discuss in part two, we're able to net the client much more in their after-tax recovery. So annuities are great. Annuities combined with the strategy we discuss in part two are even better. So here's a quick recap of part one. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act changed the deductibility of attorney's fees in taxable damages cases. The change results in clients paying tax on the entire recovery, including the attorney fee portion of the case. And attorneys are also taxed, of course, on their own legal fees. The plaintiff double tax trap creates a significant tax burden for your clients, with clients often receiving 0 to 20% of the gross recovery after taxes are paid. Using an annuity with clients can lower their marginal tax rate and thus the total amount of tax they pay, but it doesn't fix the plaintiff double tax problem. Are you getting this? Is this making sense? 
I know I've been hinting at the solution throughout part one, but it is important to fully understand the extent of the problem and the huge tax burdens that clients have been facing in taxable damages cases, especially after the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act was passed. Now we're on to part two, which outlines the solution. In part two, I'm going to talk about how your client can avoid paying the plaintiff double tax. So, the solution to the plaintiff double tax trap is the Plaintiff Recovery Trust. Before we get into the details of the what and the how of the Plaintiff Recovery Trust, I want to preview the results of the Plaintiff Recovery Trust. The Plaintiff Recovery Trust solves all of the problems we outlined in part one. The client is able to completely avoid the plaintiff double tax trap, and the client can still take advantage of annuities to further reduce their tax bill. As a settlement planner, since the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, it's been extremely frustrating trying to help clients and attorneys save on taxes in taxable damages cases. For clients, we could use annuities to minimize their tax bill, but they were still having to pay taxes on the attorney's fees. Well, I wasn't alone in my frustration on this issue. So here's how the Plaintiff Recovery Trust was created. Eastern Point Trust Company is a settlement-focused national trust company. Eastern Point Trust Company wanted to find a conservative solution to the plaintiff double tax trap. So their team of attorneys and CPAs worked in tandem with Fagri Drinker, formerly Drinker Biddle, to create the Plaintiff Recovery Trust. Eastern Point Trust Company and Fagri Drinker used a long-established estate planning arrangement and combined it with strategies regularly used in settlement tax planning to create the Plaintiff Recovery Trust. Here's just a quick background on Eastern Point and Fagery Drinker. If you haven't heard of Eastern Point Trust Company, Eastern Point is the fastest growing trust company in the United States and specializes in settlement trusts, qualified settlement funds, and other settlement related solutions. Eastern Point has administered settlements in many well known litigations, including the BP oil spill, the Madoff litigation, the asbestos litigation, NFL concussion lawsuits the VW diesel cases, and others. Here are some of Eastern Point's team members who assisted in the creation of the Plaintiff Recovery Trust. Lawrence Eisenberg, who's a tax attorney and CPA with over 35 years of experience. Joseph Toombs, an obviously well-credentialed tax attorney and academic. And Jeremy Babner, who was a former fellow in the U.S. Treasury's Office of Tax Policy. You've likely heard of Fagery Drinker, formerly Fagery, Baker, Daniels, and Drinker, Biddle, and Reith. They are one of the 50 largest law firms in the U.S. and have over 1,200 attorneys and advisors. Eastern Point Trust Company worked with Fagery Drinker to create the Plaintiff Recovery Trust. Now that we understand the background of how the Plaintiff Recovery Trust came to be and the parties involved in its creation, let's talk about how it works. So to avoid the plaintiff double tax trap, the plaintiff cannot own the lawsuit or directly receive the recovery. Instead, a specialized trust, the Plaintiff Recovery Trust, is created in the plaintiff's name and for his or her benefit, and the plaintiff assigns his or her claim to the Plaintiff Recovery Trust. Now, the Plaintiff Recovery Trust owns the litigation claim, and the lawsuit continues as usual. Any case recovery is paid to the Plaintiff Recovery Trust. The Plaintiff Recovery Trust pays the attorney's fees and distributes the net amount to the plaintiff. Let's walk through how the basic flow of funds works with the Plaintiff Recovery Trust. The legal recovery is paid to the Plaintiff Recovery Trust, and the Plaintiff Recovery Trust makes the distributions to the law firm and to the plaintiff. Because the plaintiff has assigned his or her interest in the litigation to the Plaintiff Recovery Trust, his or her only entitlement is that of a beneficiary of the Plaintiff Recovery Trust. As a result, What the client pays taxes on only reflects the amount received in that capacity, which does not include the amount payable to the attorney. This is how the plaintiff avoids paying taxes on the attorney's fee. So let's look at a case study to see how much the plaintiff recovery trust can actually save your clients. So let's start off by reviewing what happens if the client does no planning. So back to the illustration that we talked about earlier in the presentation, to assume a gross recovery of $5 million, fees and costs at 40%, and the client's combined tax rate of 45%. So in that example, the client pays a total of $2.25 million in taxes and is left with an after-tax net recovery of $750,000. 
So the client's net after-tax portion of the gross recovery is about 15%. So as a reminder, if we use an annuity, the client's tax rate goes from 45% down to a combined tax rate of 25% because it's being spread out over those 10 years. So the client nets 1.533 million rather than 750,000, which is an increase of 104.4%. So the client's net recovery is 30.7% instead of 15% just by using the annuity. However, the client is still paying tax on the full $5 million gross recovery. Next, let's look at an example where the client uses the plaintiff recovery trust only without an annuity. So same assumptions as before, a $5 million gross recovery, 40% fees and costs, and an initial client tax rate of 45%. So just using the plaintiff recovery trust means that the client's after-tax net recovery is 108% greater than had they not used the plaintiff recovery trust. So their recovery goes from 750000 to over 1.5 million, simply by using the plaintiff recovery trust. So their net portion of the gross recovery goes from 15% to 31.2% by using the plaintiff recovery trust. So just by using the plaintiff recovery trust, you've now doubled your client's net recovery. That's amazing. So now let's look at an example where the client uses both the plaintiff recovery trust and a structured settlement annuity. So the assumptions, Again, a gross recovery of $5 million. The fees and costs are 40%. And in this example, the client's combined tax rate is 25% because we're spreading out the recovery over the next 10 tax years, which lowers the marginal tax rate. Using both the plaintiff recovery trust and an annuity, the client nets $2.13 million rather than $750,000 had they not used either the plaintiff recovery trust or an annuity. That's an increase of 184%, meaning that the client's net recovery on the gross is now 426 instead of 15%. That's the power of the plaintiff recovery trust and a structured settlement annuity combined. So let's highlight a few items on this slide. If you look at the blue bar, that represents no planning at all in which the client nets $750,000 on a $5 million gross settlement, which represents 15% of the gross settlement. By using a structured settlement annuity only, the client's net more than doubles to $1.533 million. By using the plaintiff recovery trust only, the client's net also doubles to $1.562 million from $750,000. And by using the plaintiff recovery trust and an annuity, the client's net nearly triples from 750000 to $2.13 million. So many plaintiffs without doing any planning right now are receiving between 0% and 20% of the gross settlement after taxes. By doing the planning we're talking about here with the plaintiff recovery trust and an annuity, they're nearly tripling their net recovery and getting about 42% of the gross settlement rather than between 0% to 20% of the gross settlement. So let's take just a moment and look at the impact that using the plaintiff recovery trust only without an annuity has on net recoveries to the client. The higher the client's tax rate, the greater the increase in the net recovery. So for example, if your client is in the 35% tax bracket, the client's after-tax net recovery increases by 48%. If your client is in the 40% tax bracket, the client's after-tax net recovery increases by 70%. If your client is in the 45% tax bracket, the client's after-tax net recovery increases by 108%. And if the client's tax rate is 50.3%, which is common for the clients we work with in California, for example, the increase in the net recovery is 191%, or nearly triple. So if we go back to the Kobe Bryant case that we discussed earlier, if the plaintiff recovery trust had been used, the after-tax recovery to Vanessa Bryant would have increased from $1.55 million to $4.52 million, a 191% larger recovery simply by using the plaintiff recovery trust because she would not have been paying taxes on her attorney's fees. And when using an annuity along with the plaintiff recovery trust, we can often more than triple the net recovery for our clients. So do you see the power of using the plaintiff recovery trust? When we go through an analysis for any particular client, it's an absolute no-brainer that they're going to use the plaintiff recovery trust. I mean, which client that you've ever worked with 
would not want to increase their net recovery from anywhere between 50 to 191%. All of them do. Now that we've illustrated how the Plaintiff Recovery Trust can drastically increase your client's net recovery, let's go over some frequently asked questions that we often receive about the Plaintiff Recovery Trust. So first question is, what are the Plaintiff Recovery Trust fees? Eastern Point Trust Company's fee to administer the Plaintiff Recovery Trust is 3.2% of the taxable damages in the case. This fee is typically about 20% of the savings obtained for the plaintiff. In other words, 20% of what the plaintiff would have paid to the IRS without the Plaintiff Recovery Trust. There's no upfront fee, and there's only a fee if the client saves money. Eastern Point Trust Company modeled the Plaintiff Recovery Trust on the typical plaintiff attorney compensation model. Eastern Point Trust Company only wins when the plaintiff wins. All examples in this presentation include the Plaintiff Recovery Trust fee. The Plaintiff Recovery Trust results are exactly as I've illustrated in this presentation. Everything I've shown includes the Plaintiff Recovery Trust fee. As the case study demonstrated, even after the Plaintiff Recovery Trust fee, the client often nets double to triple what they would without the Plaintiff Recovery Trust. Another question we often get is, does the Plaintiff Recovery Trust actually work? Well, the Plaintiff Recovery Trust has been successfully used in many, many cases. Fagri Drinker advised on the Plaintiff Recovery Trust, and we can share a short-form version of their tax opinion upon request. And for a low flat fee, Fagri Drinker will issue a personalized tax opinion on the plaintiff's use of the Plaintiff Recovery Trust for their specific case. So the fact that Fagri Drinker will issue a personalized tax opinion letter shows just how confident Fagery Drinker is in the Plaintiff Recovery Trust. Another good question we get is when should the Plaintiff Recovery Trust be established? Well, the Plaintiff Recovery Trust must be established before it is certain that the litigation will result in a recovery, meaning before there is a determinable settlement. So really, the earlier in the litigation, the better. At the very least, the Plaintiff Recovery Trust must be set up 10 days before any settlement agreement is executed. An Eastern Point Trust Company provides all of the documents to make this process simple. Another common question we get is, will this slow down settlement or distributions to me or my client? Once the Plaintiff Recovery Trust is established, you can settle the case 10 days later. The distribution of attorney's fees and funds to the client occurs shortly after settlement, the Plaintiff Recovery Trust is not meant to hold funds. The legal recovery is paid to the Plaintiff Recovery Trust. The Plaintiff Recovery Trust distributes funds to the attorney and the client, and the Plaintiff Recovery Trust is then terminated. And funds for the law firm and the client can be paid out simultaneously. Another common question we get is, when should I introduce the Plaintiff Recovery Trust to my client? We suggest that you tell your clients at the beginning of your engagement that you have a solution to the plaintiff double tax trap. They will be very grateful and receptive because who doesn't like to pay less taxes? By telling your clients up front that the Plaintiff Recovery Trust solves this tax issue, it's a major selling point for your firm and it also provides CYA for you as well. So without the Plaintiff Recovery Trust, clients are going to think they're getting a large recovery and end up with a very small percentage of the gross recovery as we've discussed. Another good question we often get is, will the defendant object to using the Plaintiff Recovery Trust? We've never had a defendant object, and we've worked with some of the largest defendants and casualty carriers. So why don't the defendants object? Because the defendant still gets a full and complete release. Another question we get from attorneys is, am I providing tax advice to my client? No, you are not providing tax advice. Eastern Point Trust Company's documentation makes it clear that you are not advising the client on any tax issues. Am I liable if I don't tell my client about the Plaintiff Recovery Trust? The American Bar Association Litigation Committee has stated that plaintiff lawyers are supposed to flag tax issues such as these for their clients. If you don't tell your client about this issue and they find out about it later, it's at least going to be a very awkward conversation with your client and could potentially be a major malpractice lawsuit. We are here to protect you. The Plaintiff Recovery Trust provides you with liability protection and results in much happier clients. What if the client can deduct attorney's fees? Well, even if your client avoids the plaintiff double tax trap because they can deduct your legal fees because their particular case fits into one of the limited exceptions where they can deduct your legal fees, 
the client's settlement is still taxable. In those limited situations where the attorney's fees are deductible, we still would love to analyze whether an annuity can reduce your client's tax bill. So look, if you happen to be working on a case where the plaintiff can deduct your fee, it still makes sense for us to do an analysis because they can still save a bunch of money on taxes by spreading it out using a structured settlement annuity. So what are attorneys saying about the Plaintiff Recovery Trust? Well, Paula Elliott, a trial lawyer, says every trial lawyer should know about this. It dramatically reduces client taxes. Andrew Helala, a trial lawyer, says a fantastic solution in taxable cases. We'll be using this again and again. A highly professional solution and well-designed for trial lawyers. Jeffrey Travers, a trial lawyer, says this saved my client millions. I'd absolutely recommend that plaintiff lawyers consider it. Using the trust was easy and the team was incredibly helpful. Jeff Kemp, a guardian ad litem, says using the recovery trust was a no-brainer. It doubled my ward's recovery. Without hesitation, I strongly recommend the recovery trust and the team behind it. Okay, so here's a quick recap of part two. The only viable solution to the plaintiff double tax trap is the plaintiff recovery trust. The plaintiff recovery trust vastly increases the after-tax net recovery to the plaintiff, And using the plaintiff recovery trust with an annuity provides the greatest tax savings to the plaintiff. But either strategy alone can also dramatically reduce the taxes your clients will pay. Now in part three, I'll show how to get started with this strategy and how to protect yourself from upset clients and potential liability. So how do you get started? Well, step one, you'll schedule a phone call with me to discuss a case that you're working on now, or if you're not working on a particular case right now, you can call me and we can discuss how the Plaintiff Recovery Trust would fit into your practice in general terms. Step two, if you do have a case you're working on, we'll determine if the Plaintiff Recovery Trust is a good fit. If it will help your client, I'll coordinate a call with Eastern Point Trust Company, and I'll join you on that call. Eastern Point Trust Company and my firm will then establish a Plaintiff Recovery Trust for your client. If the Plaintiff Recovery Trust does not apply for whatever reason, we can then explore if an annuity would make sense to help your client save on taxes. And step three, you just do what you do best and get the best possible recovery for your client. My firm and I will then work with you and the plaintiff to maximize the tax savings once the case settles. As a reminder, if your client's case is not based on a personal physical injury, unless there's a punitive damage component or an interest component to that case, your client absolutely needs the plaintiff recovery trust and or an annuity. Why? Because your client's after-tax net recovery could double or triple. And educating your client about the plaintiff recovery trust and an annuity gives your client the opportunity to save on taxes and provides you with significant protection from failure to inform liability. The last thing you want is a malpractice lawsuit or a bar complaint from a former client because you failed to even give them the option to take advantage of the plaintiff recovery trust or an annuity to reduce their taxes. So let me ask you a question. Wouldn't it be nice in a taxable damages case to not have to have that awkward conversation with your client where you tell them that not only are they going to have to pay tax on their portion of the settlement, but they're also going to have to pay tax on your attorney's fee? So if you'd like to avoid that awkward conversation and you'd like my help To get started, the first step is to book a call with me. Here's what I'd like you to do right now. Click the button next to the video and book a free 30-minute phone call. On our phone call, we'll discuss your client's case or your practice in general. And we'll determine if the plaintiff double tax is an issue and if the plaintiff recovery trust can help and if an annuity might make sense to reduce the client's tax bill. Even if you don't have a currently pending case, let's get on a phone call now so you know what to do when you get your next taxable damage case in the door. So for everyone that books a call with me, you'll get access to two very helpful planning tools. The first is the Plaintiff Recovery Trust Client Tax Savings Calculator, which estimates how much your client could save by using the Plaintiff Recovery Trust. This is an easy way to see an estimate of how much the Plaintiff Recovery Trust saves as a client. This tool does not estimate the savings that could be achieved using an annuity. So that is where our custom tax savings analysis comes in for your clients. So we will meet with your clients at no cost and prepare a custom tax savings analysis for them. This analysis shows your clients exactly how much they can save by using the Plaintiff Recovery Trust and or by using an annuity. We use the exact details of your client's situation to prepare a personalized tax forecast for your clients. So even if your clients decide they don't want to move forward and implement the tax saving strategies we outline, our analyses are yours to keep for free. And having the plan in your client's file is great CYA if they ever come back and complain about how much they paid in taxes. 
So look, you don't need to remember all of the content that I've covered today. By getting us involved early in the process, early in the case, you and your client will be ready to settle knowing exactly what the tax ramifications will be. Our firm works best as your firm's tax planning partner. You can simply tell your clients, look, don't worry, we have a tax planning partner who will do the tax planning with you. Your client, by the time they reach settlement, has gone through something traumatic and awful. They've been harassed, defamed. In many cases, they've had to leave their job. They've gone through a very hard experience. Litigation, as you know, is not easy on your clients. So we'd love to be able to provide them with some good news as they settle their case. Rather than this being an awkward discussion where they learn they're going to net almost nothing after all the taxes are paid, we can help them understand that they can net much, much more than they thought. We'd love to do this. This is our passion. We love to help clients net more from your hard work and have a settlement plan in place that provides for their future and provides them the peace of mind they're looking for. This is what we do. This is our expertise. This is our mission. All right, here's how to book your 30-minute call with me. First, click on the button next to this video, and it will take you to a page that looks like this. You can choose a date and a time that works for you. Then enter your name, email, and phone number, and click Done. You'll receive a calendar invite, and I'll call you at the phone number you provided at the time of the appointment. So again, let's get on a phone call to make sure your clients pay as little as possible in taxes. Here's my promise. If my firm can't help your client save on taxes, I'll let you know right away. This is not going to be a high-pressure sales call. I'm a fellow attorney. My time is valuable and your time is valuable. The strategies I've outlined today have worked for hundreds of clients we've worked with nationwide, and I'm confident we can help your clients as well. You can set yourself apart from other attorneys handling taxable damages cases because you have a solution to the plaintiff double tax trap. So click the button on this page now to book your phone call. I look forward to speaking with you soon.